Yeah, come on, let's pray. Father, we love you this morning, God. We thank you for your grace, God. We thank you for your presence, God, Lord. We thank you for our people. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. High five two people and you can sit down. What, what, what is this group over here? The foodies? Food, your food? Who are these folks? The outdoors people. I, I like that. That's good. That's good. That's good. That was good. That's creative. Some of you, you're not moving no matter what. Right. I'm going to like whatever I want to like, and I'm not going to play this game. Because I've been sitting here for 22 years, and I am not moving. <laughs> Snyder, I caught you. You're like, you're, Dan's like, Dan's like, Rose, you're a Seahawk fan. Right now, right now, you're a Seahawk fan. Don't you move. Don't you like food? You don't even like to go to the mall. Yeah, yeah, yeah I saw him. I saw him twisting her arm and stuff. <laughs> she said, yeah, 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 yeah. That's how you stay married a long time. Say yes, dear. Yeah. Man, it's good, good. God's good. He is good. Um, you know, uh, the Bible has a lot to say about your people. The Bible has a lot to say about this thing called community. Community is a massive component that we were originated in and destined for. Think about that. We were originated in community. We are destined for community. And everything in this world, this, this kind of this hard world that we live in, it tries to isolate us and separate us and divide us from being in community. If you don't mind, I'm just going to keep my to, keep, to stay calm today, let's welcome everybody on Facebook, too. Hey, everybody on Facebook. Good to see you. To stay calm today, I'm going to just kind of sit down a little bit and uh, kind of move around a little bit less, if that's okay, so I can make it for two services, So because I'm going on about three hours of sleep, which is awesome. <laughs> three hours of sleep and a monster, no longer sponsored by Red Bull. Monster now. Anyway, just kidding. Never sponsored. The truth is, you can't forget where you came from. My mom and dad used to say that to me all the time when I was growing up. Son, remember who helped you get to where you got in this life and don't forget from whence you came. Don't forget where you came from. You know, when I, when I think back about this conversation of, you know, these are my people, what we talked about last week and we talked about the scars and Oh my gosh, isn't it so funny? The scars conversation becomes such a reality last night. I, Melinda's joking about it in the ER, and I'm like, babe, it's not, not, not a time to tell jokes. <laughs> no, actually, I was trying to tell the most jokes to make light of it. So, um, But uh, you can't forget where you came from. And community has such a massive role in this journey of not just faith for you and I, some of you are Christ followers in this room. Some of you are kicking the tires. Some of you have prayed the prayer of salvation and you're pretty sure that eternity is secure, but you're still not living the life that Jesus designed for you to live. And community, community is the place where you begin to tap into how you were originally designed. Let me show you in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 and 27. Really cool verse here. It says, Then God said, Let us make human beings in our image. To be like us. Then they will reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, the livestock, and all the wild animals on the earth, and the small animals that scurry on the, along the ground. So God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. What is he, what are, what are we learning from this? We're learning that we are all wired a certain way. We have all been built for a certain context. That you and I, in our unique design, we were built a certain way. We were made in our own image. Nobody has the same fingerprint in this room. Nobody has the same, you know, we're real technologically advanced in 2017. Nobody has the same retina scan in this room. Last night, I can, there, there's... 
I, I totally get the sentiment. There's nothing worse to say to a race car driver when he gets out of a burning car. Man, cars can be replaced, but you can't. I get the sentiment, but I was going to win that race, doggone it. I just want you to know that. Like, I'm, Gracie is hurt right now, and I'm thinking about her, you know. But, but I get the sentiment. I'm just, I was trying to make light of that, too, last night. So, But um, we're all built with a certain context. We're all built with this original design. But here's the thing. It was God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. God said, let us make human beings in our image, not in my image. So we were originally created in community, for community. Because the original intent for you and I as human beings was to have relationship with them, with Him, three in one, one in three, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. We were created in our original design to be in community, we were created from community for community. So here's the deal. The best version of ourself is found on the other side of community. Oh, I'm going to say that again because it's that good. The best version of ourself is found on the other side of community. The best version of ourself is not found in isolation. The best version of ourself is not found just hanging just with our family. Family is family. Community is multiple families. God pulled woman out of man, pulled family out of woman, and pulled society out of family. That's the ordained progression of how you and I were created to relate to one another, to commune with one another. So the best version of you and I is not what's found with mom and dad and brothers and sisters and aunts and uncles and Grammy and grandpas, although that is nucleus is absolutely essential for community. The best version of ourself is found on the other side of community, saying yes to it. So, so we move, though, thinking about the origin of how we were created. We were created from community, for community, originally. To not forget from where we came. But our destiny is also community. Let's fast forward the tape a little bit. Let's go to Revelations. Revelations chapter 7. Verses 9 and 10, written by the Apostle John. He gives us a glimpse of the end of time here. And, and, he, and he writes about it so that we could read about it today. He, he gives us a glimpse of heaven. After all sin is gone, Jesus has come back and brought his church back to himself. Let's read about what it says. It says, after this, I saw a vast crowd too great to count from every nation and tribe and people and language standing in front of the throne and before the Lamb. Bible 101, the Lamb capitalized is Jesus. They were clothed in white robes and held palm branches in their hands and they were shouting with a great roar, Salvation comes from our God who sits on the throne and from the land. Okay. So in Genesis, we see this original design from community, the community of Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, for community, to literally out of the context of families do we build community. Then we fast forward to the very end, to this vision that John, the Apostle John, gives us of heaven, we see this, we see this, this community there, and, and, and it's very interesting because it's a picture 
of community in heaven. It's common unity. He picks out of that that there's different nations. There's different languages. There's different tribes. And in, in light of world events in this country right now, there's different skin colors in community. And the best version of myself and yourself will be on the other side of community. Let me just say something. In the culture that we live in, there is a massive onslaught to conform. Nobody wants distinction anymore. Nobody wants people to live with distinctives that make them unique. They want everybody to look the same and sound the same. They want everybody to, to just have a numbness about them. It's counter to the destiny of community. And you as a Christ follower must fight against anything that would cause you to conform and no longer be distinct in your original creation, tribe, tongue, skin color, gender, whatever it is, the best version of yourself is on the other side of you being yourself in the context of community. In the context of community. There is distinction. There is specific design. There is specific intent in your life and in my life. We've got to have diversity and unity. We must have diversity and unity because heaven is going to be filled with all kinds of Christians from all kinds of cultures, from all kinds of time, all focused on the same throne. Incredible diversity and one throne. Incredible distinction and one Jesus. And the antidote, the antidote for isolation, the antidote for what? This current of this world would cause you to no longer celebrate you for who you are. And no longer, that, the antidote for that is none other than Jesus himself. The full revelation of who Jesus is. The full revelation of the 100% man, 100% God come to the earth to redeem humanity to its not just its original intent and its original destiny and its original design, but ultimately to save us from eternal yucky stuff, damnation. I said jokingly last night, if hell truly is a lake of fire, I've been close to it, and I don't ever want anybody that I know to go there. And I was joking because I'd actually been in fire just moments before, but I mean it very seriously. It's a very, very, very scary moment. And my point is this, is the best version of you and me is that we would be diverse in how we were distinctly created. But we would come together in common unity, in community. And we would allow ourselves to be perfected into who Christ has called us to be. The first book was our origin. The last book was our, our destiny. And without diversity and unity, we have no community. If we are all the same, then we are not a community. We are a schism of a community thinking that we are a community, but we're not a community because community was defined by Jesus in Acts chapter 2. All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper, and to prayer. A deep sense of awe came over 
them all, and the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders, and all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. They worshiped together at the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy and generosity, all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved this is the fallout of what jesus did in a very charged society racially charged economically charged uh, it was charged all over the first century when jesus comes to jerusalem is as charged as the world that we live in today and when he came and revealed himself to men and women and reminded them of their original design that they were to be from community for community and they gave their lives to him a transformation took place yes they transformed personally but ultimately out of the personal relationship relationship with Christ a community was birthed that had this 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 ideal about them that man we're not going to let our brothers and sisters do life alone we're not going to let our brothers and sisters struggle without our prayers we're not going to let our brothers and sisters win without our high fives we're not going to let our brothers and sisters go to where our brothers and sisters are going to go in this life we're going to be a community with common unity. And I want you to know, on the porch when that message was preached, there was, there was every tribe, there was every tongue, there was every color of skin. There, there can be no community without diversity. There can be no community without difference. You can have family and all look the same, but you can't have community and all look the same. And it's time as a church that we recognize that the people that we are called to walk with and do life with must look different, sound different, and be different than us if we're ever going to understand the destiny that's before us as Christians and as the local church. I mean, I, I, I got to tell you something. It, I've been, I've been in ministry a long time, pastor a long time, and I, I'm not too sure in times of adversity, I'm not too sure who gives more support and offers more help. Racers at a racetrack or Christians in the seats? Because in the last 12 hours, my phone has blown up with, you can have my car, you can do this, you can drive this, you can be here. And I'm telling you, sometimes as Christians, we look back at calamity and we say, well, you know, it's pretty dangerous what they do. You know, Pastor, I mean, you have kids, it's pretty, pretty dangerous. No, it is, and I'm processing some of that. But I'm telling you, if we don't have diversity... We can't have community. And, and, I, and I believe, I, I mean, I, 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 I pray for this church that we would get more diverse. That we would allow ourselves to take the risk to be a real community, not a family. Everybody says, oh, I love my church. I'm, it's a family. I get that get that i'm not minimizing that I, man there's a lot of spiritual family here for me too but but we're not called to be a family we're in a family the family of jesus we're called to be a community because communities change the landscape and the fabric of culture it's what community does hmm. community equals belonging Jesus created a space for belonging. He took care of sin once and for all and established a relationship with us that would build a diverse community of all those who would confess with their mouth and believe in their heart that he's the son of God. He made the barrier the entrance, the barrier to entrance, the, air, the entrance barrier, the barriers to entry, he made them very simplistic so that we could step over that line 
and belong to Jesus Christ. And it's high time that not just the local church, guys, but you and I personally, as believers filled with love, make the barriers to entry a little more simplistic to our own heart. Well, you don't know, man. I mean, I, I trusted before, and I, got, I get all that. I get stepped on and smashed at least twice a quarter real bad, whether I want it or not. But it doesn't stop. The walls that we put up as believers won't foster the destiny that we're called to become. The barrier to entry to being with God for eternity is very simplistic. May the barrier to entry to belonging to this community, the Rock Church community, may that be simplistic as well. May it be simplistic for people to connect to your heart and your life. People like you, people not like you, people that believe like you, people that don't believe like you. The reality is... Until people know they belong, they don't care what you believe. 20 years ago, it wasn't like that. We hung with people that believed like us, and then we created community after that. Not anymore. This culture is absolutely needing to belong to a community. And from belonging, what happens? Then comes believing. More people, more people have met Jesus Christ because you joined a team at this church than you have any idea of. More people, because, see, you think the worship is for you. You think you're just singing songs for you, but you don't know that the sound of your voice inspired that man five seats away who just lost his job and is walking in here on his last dime and his last bit of hope, hoping that he could feel some sort of encouragement so that he could get up tomorrow morning on Monday and put two feet in front of the other and go out and get it. And you thought we were just singing some songs. And yet your voice in that moment was his inspiration. I'm telling you, when you come together and belong to what's happening in your church, people begin to believe in the God whom you confess and whom you serve. And when you sit back like a keyboard soldier and just begin to go at them with all your words from the keyboard, nobody believes what you're saying because they want to participate and experience Jesus with you. And when they experience him with you, they'll make the decision to move from belonging to believing. It's so true, church. That's how we build community. And so many of you, from the kids' leaders in the back to the ushers that ushed this morning, I don't know what ushing is, but man, it, it happens a lot around here. To the greeters at the door, to the people on the stage, to the, to the here, to the there, to the everywhere. Honestly, you are allowing who you are, your destiny, your, de your original design, and your destiny. You are allowing it to be seen for others, and they are feeling a sense of belonging because you're there, because you serve, because you believe. And ultimately, when they belong, the decision will come whether to believe or not. And that's how this church is growing for the last couple decades. Because people can belong to something. They don't have to take a shower before they, well, take a shower physically. Yeah, what I mean is they don't have to clean up their life and figure it all out before they can belong to this community. They don't. Because we can't have, we can't have community without diversity. I'll end with this. Um, Melinda and I have always enjoyed the great passions of remodeling our home. And we've done this many times, and it always looks worse and at its worst right before it's finished. Right before it, it starts really taking shape. 
And I just prophetically speak into your life that if you got if you got some rehab going on and you got some areas in your house that look a little worse it always looks worse before it's totally finished don't you ever disqualify yourself for the rooms of your house that are undone because there are always places and compartments of people's hearts and lives that are absolutely strong and intact and full of what God wants. And so this morning, we're going to be a community. And we're going to go ahead and be diverse in our, not just our features and our physical things, but in the things going on in our heart. And I'd love for you just to stand right where you're at. Because I know there's some remodeling going on. You can't watch what's happening in Virginia right now, in West Virginia right now. You can't watch it and not have something happen in your heart. And I, I tell you, Pastor Jeb, what, what, are, what are you praying? I am praying that God would give me eyes to see where I am stuck and need a renovation. Because probably the hardest part about where we're at culturally as a nation with all the political divide and the racial divide and all of these social issues, all this current, is sometimes I don't know, I don't know if I'm okay. Like, like some people say saying nothing is the right thing. Other people say if you don't say anything, you're wrong, you're you're apart. Like I don't like I don't know about you, I just don't know. But I know this. I know that I was created from community for community. I know that when Jesus redeemed my life and when he redeemed humanity, he built a community. And I know from Revelations that my future is going to be spent in community. So though I may not have issues to all the world's current events, or solutions, not issues, though I may not have solutions to all the world's current events, I have solid ground to stand upon. And that is that I am called by Jesus to love his church to establish myself in it and to be the diversity and the unity that he originally designed his church to be because I still believe contrary to all the all the hurdles that are out there and there's a lot of them we got a lot of ground to push guys I still believe the church this the church of Jesus Christ I still believe it's the hope of the world I still believe it's the only solution to the social issues in America, and I get it. There's a lot of people that don't believe that, and a lot of people that get angry about that, and a lot of people that just put, put the church in one box or paint it one color. No. No, the church is not a color, and it's not in a box. It's a diversity of colors, and it's a diversity of boxes because we don't pe treat people like objects and projects. Because people are people. Humans have wants and desires and fears and needs. And they need, they need to be loved and need to be saved. And that is way more important than pushing some objective agenda. And way more important than pushing some project on humanity so you can get 100,000 likes on social media. Man, people are at stake. And I know that Jesus built a community and he built it for people. And I want you to know. That's why the church is a mess. If you've ever said, man, you know, the local church, what a mess. Yeah, because it's built on people. And if we keep it right, it will be messy. If we keep it right, if we, if we keep it right, guys like Melinda, and, oh, guys like Melinda, guys like me and Melinda and a lot of my peers and my friends and telling us, we will take heat and we will take arrows and we will get attacked for standing for people. 
because everybody wants to turn somebody into a project or an object so they can get some sort of accolades from it. I'm going to treat people like people. Sometimes people need to be confronted. Sometimes people need to be loved. They always need to be loved, but sometimes they need to be confronted. we got to sometimes work it out, and sometimes it's not easy, and it's always messy. Always messy. Community is messy, but I'm going to tell you it's worth it because the best version of you is on the other side of community. Best version of all of us is on the other side of community. So Father, I thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. If you need a rehab in a corridor or a room of your heart, I want you to lift both hands in the air. Father, I thank you right now, God, for the perfect work of the cross, Father. And Lord, James says, God, that we can be forgiven of our sins, God, but we are healed in the context of confessing to our brother or our sister. And Father, I pray healing now in Jesus' name. I pray a significant trust over this house, God. Lord, I thank you, God, for sisters trusting sisters, God. Brothers trusting brothers, Father. I thank you, God, that the dark places of our life, God, would come manifest to life, Father, and be rehabbed and remodeled, God, into the glorious design, God, that you originally created. And I thank you for it. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' name.